Okay, awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Kalina Silverman. And today I'm going to talk to you about Big Talk. And let's see, it's five o'clock now. I don't know if we should wait a couple minutes or if I should just launch into it. Um, but this will be a somewhat interactive presentation. So be sure to use the, the chat room. Um, where's everyone uh, listening in from? We'll start in a minute or two. Egypt, cool. Never been to Egypt, but I hope the situation is okay over there. Give it one more minute and then I'll start the presentation. Two AM in Paris. Wow, thanks for staying up late for the presentation. And let me know if you have any problems with um, the connection or the um, the sound, and just write it in the chat room um, while I'm presenting. Because I know this morning during a presentation there there were some issues. Um, I think everyone in the world is on Zoom right now, so maybe that's causing connection issues. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Let's see. Can everyone see my screen? All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So today I'm going to talk to you about Big Talk and how to make meaningful connections while social distancing. So quick background on myself. I'm from Santa Monica, California. That's where I am right now. I went to Northwestern University in Chicago and studied journalism there. And uh, a couple of years ago, I lived in Singapore as a US Fulbright research scholar studying ways to use Big Talk to build empathy across cultures. And now I'm a Fulbright ambassador. And I currently work as the creator and CEO of Big Talk, which is something that started off as a project and now is what I do full time. And so, in short, Big Talk is simply about skipping small talk to ask deeper questions and make more meaningful connections with people. And it's a communication approach you can use with people uh, in your life, ranging from your family members, to your coworkers, to your classmates, uh, students, um, love interests, and even yourself. So I'm going to give everyone a couple minutes to think about these two kind of initial Big Talk icebreaker questions. And it'd be great if you could write them in the chat box. They are, what are you curious about lately? And if you could create and run your own country, what would it be like? These are just some fun Big Talk questions to start off with. So please share in the chat box if you are able. I'm not able to. Give you all a minute to answer the quiet group. Ahmed said, I'm curious about leather products making lately. Cool. What kind of leather products? And are you making them yourself? Um, I said, what kinds of leather products? And are you able to make them yourself? 
Ricky said he's curious about solving the issue of latency in online communication. <laughs> That's a good one, especially right now. <laughs> cool, you did your first leather wallet a few days ago. That's awesome. I'd love to see that. Um, I'll share. Uh, lately, I've been curious about board sports ranging from snowboarding to surfboarding uh, to surfing to skateboarding. All right. I'll continue the presentation. Oh, Ricky made a leather bag a few years ago. It was a lot of fun. Cool. I never thought about leather making products. It's cool that both of you have been doing that. Great. Well, I'll go back to the presentation, but thank you for sharing. Let's see. All right. So, oops. So today's focus for this presentation is about how the pursuit of empathy inspired Big Talk and the impact of making Big Talk with your friends, your family, your coworkers, your community, and even yourself, and then how to deepen social connections during quarantine. So the idea of empathy can be pretty amorphous, um, but even at a young age, it's very relevant. In fact, this was a six-year-old who wrote that grown-ups are weird because every one of them says, how are you? And you always have to say good, even if you're not good. So even at a young age, we can start to grasp the importance of being very honest and open about our lived experiences, um, which for some reason can be harder for grown-ups than kids who are, who are often the most honest. And so now I'm going to share um, a little bit of the background story of how Big Talk started. So it actually began as a sort of personal uh, social experiment and video series that I created the summer after my sophomore year of college. Um, I wanted to um, have deeper conversations with people because I felt like a lot of the things in college that we were talking about were um, about where we were from, what we wanted to do after school, but it was, it was harder to find these deeper conversations where we could really self-reflect. And I had been feeling quite lonely um, during my freshman year, and I, I thought that I was the only one who had felt that way. And it turned out that later on, at the end of freshman year and earlier on in the middle of college, um, people started opening up and sharing that they too were struggling. So I'm gonna try to play this video um, if the sound doesn't work for you, then you can go to YouTube and type in, here, I'll put it in the chat box, um, before I die, big talk. And you should be able to watch it through YouTube and you can mute the Zoom call because I know it might, the sound might not work very well here, but let me give it a shot. Let's see. Can everyone hear that? All right, I'll play it. And if you can't hear it through um, Zoom, just uh, watch it through YouTube. Oh, 
over the Appalachian Trail. What's the three signature here? Some special? I'd like to be a hepatologist. Somebody who studies reptiles and amphibians. See my kids graduate. Do you believe that with any alcohol and drugs? Or probably be closed like that. And just be happy day by day. Being able to reconcile with my father and say I love him. I want to have a life of kids. I wrote like an essay on it when I was in fifth grade. And I remember all my friends made fun of me because everyone was like, I want to be, I want to be a sports star or a movie star. I'd be happy because uh, I already lived, before I did very bad, I was homeless for 15 years. Maybe a whole lot of my friends. <laughs> I would take a I would take a road trip to go see someone today. I can't say. I would tell them that I love them. Yeah. Do they know you love them? I think so. What would I want to do today? Probably yeah. Die tomorrow. Find a road trip. Die tomorrow. Be with my family. If I knew I was going to die tomorrow, I'd get on the airplane to go for my You know, <laughs> it's literally, um, I'll say the most significant relationship that I have, being 18 and having a baby. If I were dying, I'd love to have Charlie on my bed. If Ray was dying, I'd have this little man from my dog that would cuddle right next to me. I would not, oh, that's fascinating, it's a dog bark. <laughs> Do you love that or what? I'm in denial thinking it's going to happen. I can't die. <laughs> My mom said that the day before she died, that if she would die tomorrow, she would have lived for the fire. She died for the fire. So, Billy told me that. So I'm gonna stop it. Oops. I'm gonna stop it right there. Let's see. Was everyone able to see that? Would someone type in the chat box if that worked? Yes, awesome. All right, and we'll go back to presentation. Soft but audible. Okay, cool. Yeah. So if you want to watch it after, it's in YouTube, um, and you can just type in "Before I Die" big talk in order to see it. Oops. So I'll continue on. Um, so that was a video I made um, as just sort of an experiment. Um, on my own in Los Angeles. And it showed that it didn't matter where someone was from, what they looked like, what they did. I was talking to both a homeless man on the beach and a businessman in Beverly Hills. Um, everyone would talk about these similar universal life sentiments. Um, in this case, it was about family and wanting to see family before they died. Um, and so I posted this video to uh, YouTube and then shared it to Facebook. And then it started getting picked up by, friends were sharing it and then some news sites started sharing it. and then. The Huffington Post wrote about it, and USA Today, and NBC, and Forbes, and Business Insider, and it started spreading around the world. And um, I started getting invited to speak about this idea of making big talk. Um, and I gave a, um, oops, a TEDx talk about it that uh, today has over uh, 6 million views on YouTube. And because of these views, I started receiving responses from people all over the world who had found ways to use big talk in their everyday lives. So here are some examples. Um, right here, these were two gentlemen in South Africa who made their own big talk style video at their university. Uh, in the top middle, that was Peace Corps volunteers in Thailand who were using it, big talk questions as icebreakers to get to know each other on a deeper level um, from, uh, from their respective countries. And then on the top right, that was a big talk party in uh, Trinidad and Tobago, um, where they were using big talk questions uh, 
to, you know, get beyond the small talk and chit chat you would normally do when you're just drinking at a party. And the bottom was a big talk dinner with strangers held in Berlin, Germany. And people started asking for tools for how to actually have these big talk conversations because it can often be kind of weird to just walk up to a stranger and ask them, what do you want to do before you die? So I made this card game of questions that skip the small talk. Uh, you can see here's the question, what do you want to do before you die in the top right? And people started sharing more examples of how they would make big talk. And I started partnering with different organizations and companies and schools. Um, but um, the ultimate goal of Big Talk was always going back to the original idea of alleviating loneliness in your own mind and your own experiences and feeling like you weren't just um, having these kinds of conversations with yourself, but with other people and yourself too and helping to understand yourself better. And, and in fact, loneliness is a very pervasive problem today. Um, the former Surgeon General of the US said, the world is suffering from an epidemic of loneliness we cannot rebuild strong, authentic social connections. We'll continue to splinter apart in the workplace and in society. And I think especially now during this quarantine, um, we need to be very careful to protect each other from loneliness because it's very easy to get trapped in your own mind during this time and be affected by the news or whatever's going on or only be insular with your own quarantine circle. So it's cool that there's this global conference going on. Um, here are some... Um, uh, ways people have been making big talk during quarantine or while social distancing and people have been sharing their ideas uh, um, and examples with me. So the bottom middle, you can see there was a Zoom call where people were playing the big talk question card game for a girl's birthday. Um, in the bottom left, someone was telling me about how she had a FaceTime with her uh, best friend from high school and they asked each other big talk questions. Um, the bottom right, um, a man from Japan that told me he held a big talk uh, video chat with a bunch of children from all over the world. And on the top left, a woman held a big talk virtual tea time session. And here are ways people have been using big talk in the, over the past few years. And I've kind of put in the bottom how you could adapt them to quarantine and during the social distancing time. So this was um, a jail education solution startup had inmates making Big Talk through a tablet program. Um, and they would answer these questions to reconnect with their goals and aspirations before being released from prison. So I thought one way during quarantine to sort of adapt this idea is create your own Big Talk journal. Maybe just write down deep questions at the top and then answer them yourself. And oftentimes I find um, that I don't even realize my own answers to these questions until I start writing them down or even illustrating them. Sometimes you just need to have a conversation with yourself. Here, a, a basketball team made big talk on their bus ride. Um, and the coach had written me because he said um, that oftentimes with sports and with more, I guess, masculine occupations, traditionally masculine occupations, a lot of times people don't show vulnerability. Um, but by making big talk with the team on the bus ride, a lot of the guys opened up and shared stories. And so if you have any sort of team right now um, that you are socially distant or physically distancing from, but not socially distancing from, you could um, do a sort of big talk conversation with your team or chat group. I know on Sunday, I'm going to do one with a group of veterans that usually gets together. And here uh, is an example of how Universal Music Australia used the card game to have um, different uh, musical celebrities answering these questions in a video format. So you could even answer questions yourself and record a video of you responding to them and make your own personal video or interview series with someone else over Zoom or whatnot or Instagram Live. And here someone wrote to me about how they use um, Big Talk when uh, there's someone who has autism. So he said, dear Kalina, I'm autistic and I can't fathom the reason for small talk. I big talk, but I can be careless if I'm not very careful. My big talk tends to be intrusive, perhaps as a result of the autism, an issue that has been left dangling by both our family counselor and my therapist. I have an extreme aversion to groups. It is a bit of a miracle. I found information on issues I deal with from a credible source. Your website is a safe place. I can't wait to show my wife your site. She's my small talk coach. 
So maybe during quarantine, if there's someone you haven't heard from in a while or someone you're close to, but maybe there's someone who typically has difficulty communicating, take that extra step to reach out to them. I think Matt McCarthy, your volume's on and it's cutting through. Um, oops. Um, and over the past few years, I've done different Big Talk events about uh, making meaningful connections instead of just networking for companies such as Adobe, Google, Elite SEM, Microsoft. And so I encourage you during quarantine to maybe host a virtual Big Talk networking icebreaker where you skip the small talk and you don't just talk about your jobs. And Big Talk is really relevant for all ages, ranging from kids who are six years old to adults at any age. Um, so if you have children or students or um, young, young, young adults that you come in contact with, perhaps you could try asking them some Big Talk questions, maybe some simple ones like, what do you dream about? Or where would you like to wake up tomorrow? Just get their imagination rolling. Um, I've had people from all over the world uh, write down their own Big Talk questions at different events. Um, so the top two were written by middle schoolers in Col Colorado. The bottom three were written by exchange students in, uh, from Uzbekistan. So even kids are, write the most profound questions. For example, um, in the top left, they said, what is one of the biggest obstacles you face in your life so far and how did you conquer it? This is from a 12 year old. Um, in the bottom um, left, someone from Uzbekistan wrote, what is one pain you felt that hurt more than an injury? Um, the middle, when you have a child, how will you raise that child differently from how you were raised or the same? Uh, the bottom right, if your life story were shared in the form of a book, what would be its name or title? I think that's a fun question and really hard to answer. But if anyone has the title of their book, feel free to write it in the chat box. And one of my favorite Big Talk stories um, was a Big Talk inspired marriage proposal. So a man who was in the military uh, wrote big talk letters with his girlfriend at the time back and forth. Um, he was deployed in the Middle East, I'm not sure exactly where, with his bomb squadron. And he would write these letters back and forth with her to the point where he asked me if I could make a custom, will you marry me big talk card for him um, that he could propose to her when he was returning from his deployment. And so I wrote to my manufacturer and I had them print out this custom, will you marry me card. And a few months later, I received these engagement photos from his fiance. So maybe in quarantine, um, you could do big talk FaceTimes or do handwritten letters back and forth. I know I'm working with one uh, nonprofit prison organization called Write a Prisoner, where um, they're gonna have prisoners who have pen pals uh, answer big talk questions back and forth with each other. So maybe you could do some handwritten letters right now during this time of social, uh, physical distancing. And when I was living in Singapore, I did a research project about how to build big talk or build empathy across cultures through these kinds of questions. And it ended up coming down to very simple questions that people could relate to across cultures. And I was working with Bangladeshi migrant workers and Singaporeans. So these were just five questions that um, were universally, universally applicable across cultures. They were, what do you miss? What do you find beautiful? What gives you hope? What has been your favorite age so far and why? And what has been one of the kindest things someone has ever done for you? So maybe if you have a big talk Zoom chat that's global, like what we're doing right now, you could try out some of these questions. Feel free to screenshot it. And here's a fun example. Um, there's a gentleman in Ireland who runs a horse breeding farm and he has started his own big talk podcast for horse breeders. So he'll ask different horse breeders from around the world these, uh, these deeper questions related to their specific trade. So I know two of you were talking about leather making. Maybe you could delve deeper into um, leather making and questions around that and create your own podcast series or, or just interview series. And it's a great way to learn about other people or learn about your own profession on a deeper level too. So with all these ideas and examples, Big Talk's goal has always remained the same. It's to foster more meaningful connections and enhance interpersonal communication 
respect people's differences while honoring the commonalities in human experiences and serve as a storytelling platform to build empathy across boundaries of difference. And these ideas um, are relevant at work and in your personal life. And while empathy is this ingredient for making big talk, um, trust and psychological safety can be an outcome. In fact, Google spent years studying effective teams at work and they said the single quality that contributed most to success was feelings of trust and psychological safety between coworkers. So by having these kinds of more open conversations and being more vulnerable, you're actually able to trust your coworkers more to do better work. So it's critical that we remember how to listen to and understand each other, especially during these times. And deep, honest, meaningful connections are foundations of peace, strength, and solidarity at work, in communities, your country, and the world at large. This is actually a very unique time of global solidarity. So now for the fun part is how to actually make big talk. So there are a few rules. First, when making big talk, ask open-ended questions that aren't just yes or no questions. Then ask questions that would elicit personal stories from the person you're asking. And finally, ask a question that is universal, which means any human being could answer it regardless of their background. It doesn't matter what they look like, where they're from, what they do, what their age is. And then when responding to a big talk question, it's important to practice active listening, which means asking follow-up questions and taking note of specific things they say that you can relate back to, which goes to the next uh, point, which is to show empathy. So if someone says something, something that you can relate to, make sure you mention that um, and respond accordingly. And it doesn't have to be the exact same experience, but maybe it's the same emotion around that experience. And then be authentic, of course. Um, I find that the more vulnerable you are when talking, the, more, uh, the easier it is for someone else to become vulnerable back with you. And it's amazing what kinds of conversations can open up and the connections and bonds that can form. And finally, if you can, be helpful. There might be a time where someone is talking about how they want to learn leather making and maybe Ahmed is, says, oh, I did that during quarantine um, and he's able to help them and help them learn more about it. So you never know what, how a question can evolve into learning something or being able to seek help or offer help. It just creates a positive cycle. So normally when I do a big talk session in person, we have a breakout session where I pass out the question cards and people are able to do a sort of almost like speed dating mix and match round where they pass out the questions back and forth. And um, we won't be able to do the mix and match part, but um, we do have these small group discussion questions that I've come up with that are relevant during quarantine. So I'm gonna see if you guys wanna take maybe a few minutes to perhaps answer some of these in the chat room. Um, so these are specific questions I wrote for during this time. They are, what are you looking forward to? What are you going to do with your freedom after quarantine that is different than what you were doing before? What have you started but never finished and why? What curiosities can you explore from the comfort and safety of your home? What's something you've always wanted to try that now would be a good time to try? Um, how can you care for others right now? Who in this world do you love most and what are you doing about it? What gives you hope? What does this world need more of and how can you help? Where do you find peace? What little things in life do you take the time to stop and appreciate? What have you witnessed that has strengthened your faith in humanity? What is your greatest strength and what do you fight for? So maybe if you want to choose one of these questions to answer in the chat room. I think like I, I should be in your right room, right? Just send just send me. Okay. Thanks. See you. I've opened it up so people can type into the chat room and I'll give it a couple minutes. If someone wants to choose a question um, or two to answer. And I'll answer a couple as well.
on that said, I started a thousand piece puzzle. Wow, that's a lot of pieces. And didn't finish, although I was very close to finishing because of the many monotonic color pieces. Wow, what's it a, what's it a picture of? Um, Robin said, she's answering number two. What are you gonna do with your freedom after, or sorry, if, Robin, I'm not sure if you're a woman or man or uh, other identifying. What are you gonna do with your freedom after quarantine that is different than you were doing before? To really acknowledge with gratitude this time that we had to reset and appreciate nature and our compassion regenerating. Ahmed's puzzle is a farm in Denmark. That sounds pretty. Yeah, I wish we could share photos in Zoom. And I answered question nine, uh, or oops, I meant to answer question eight, sorry. Um, little things I've taken time to stop and appreciate, to stop and appreciate. Um, I've noticed a lot more of the plants in my neighborhood and the houses and the apartments and just taking note of architecture and plants and flowers um, and people's eyes when they smile behind their face masks. It makes a huge difference. You can notice when their eyes crinkle up. Here's someone else typing, so I'll wait another minute. Um, if you email me, I can share some of the slides with you. There. And for five, let's see, what gives you hope? People coming together and rising gives you hope. That's great. Um, I'll move the puzzle in camera. In camera. Ah, let's see. Oh, on the grid you can see. Oh, awesome, you're sharing the picture of the puzzle. <laughs> cool, I see it. So how many pieces have you done? <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> cool. So, um, great, thank you for sharing, cool. So I'll keep the screen like this. Um, let's see, I'll move the presentation over. So we can share the chat box. And, um, so the next part is to create your own big talk question. So I'll give everyone a moment to create their own. So remember the criteria for a big talk question is that it is um, universal. So anyone in the world could answer it, which is good because we have people from all over the world here. Uh, that it's not just a yes or no question and that it is meaningful and skips the small talk in some way. So if you could write down maybe on your own journal or in the chat group, your big talk question, that would be great. Vicky said, if there were two worlds, I'll come up with a question right now. Uh, Daniel said, what was something you believed before this crisis and that you think differently about today? It's a good question. And if anyone wants to answer Daniel's question, <laughs> oh man, that's Robin, where's your shirt up? If anyone wants to answer Daniel's question, what was something you believed before this crisis and that you think differently about today? Please do. Um, I'll try to think of my answer to that. Something you believed before this crisis. Cool. 
Well, the obvious one is the way germs spread. Um, but I guess before this crisis, I believed that Zoom calls um, or virtual events weren't uh, as meaningful or impactful. But now that I've been on so many, I've found it so cool being able to meet people from all over the world um, through these virtual events. Just this morning, it was with the school in Portugal. Um, George said, or George's, sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right. Question we're using on openbubble.net. If you could have dinner with anyone, who would it be and why? Good question. And Ricky said, two worlds, one where everyone was 30% more intelligent than you, another where everyone was 30% less intelligent than you. Which would you live in? Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I guess if it was in the one where people were 30% less intelligent than you, if you could um, impact them in some way or be their leader, maybe that would be helpful to live in. If everyone was more intelligent than you, there'd be a lot you could learn, but you might live your whole life feeling inadequate, which I don't know, some people could handle and some couldn't. If you could have dinner with anyone, who would it be and why? Right now it would be my group of best friends who I miss so much. So we'll continue onwards, but feel free to keep typing in the chat group any of your uh, questions or answers. So um, this is the question reflection section, but we can uh, move it to the end um, uh, and take Q&A or just people can talk. Um, Daniel, two worlds, more intelligent, love to be the dumbest person in the room. That's great. I admire that a lot. I think it's really cool to be surrounded by people who are smarter than you. Um, so this concludes the majority of the presentation. Now I'll just do some um, wrap up and reflection. Um, so today or in the future, as you go back to your home, schools and workplaces or Zoom calls, um, think about how you can introduce these big talk ways of storytelling, learning, and empathizing into your own communities to help deepen social connections. And here are just ideas um, I wrote down for becoming more socially involved instead of isolated during quarantine. So um, let's see, I wrote writing and illustrating handwritten cards and letters to loved ones and friends who are far away, or even in your own city. Maybe you're just not able to see your friend who lives a couple miles away, but sending them a letter could be a really nice gesture. Um, hosting virtual happy hours and parties. Um, another great one to do during this time while everyone is home is calling an old mentor or teacher and soaking in their life wisdom. Like Daniel said, uh, being around people who are more intelligent than you, it's always good to seek advice from those older and wiser than you. Another idea, talking, engaging with the local people in your neighborhood from a safe distance, of course, and the central workers that you do come into contact with. Um, I struck up a conversation with my male woman and we talked about our families the other day. I had to take an Uber one time um, and I bonded with him over music. And he said that our conversation inspired him to take up the piano. And our conversation inspired me to start practicing guitar more. Um, sometimes just like cuddling next to and laughing with the people who you are quarantining with and just watching comedy and silly YouTube or TikToks or whatever you watch videos. Um, cooking new meals with friends and family or delivering treats to your neighbors and friends. After this, I have to go pick up soup from my family's friend who she's leaving it in her mailbox. Um, and was cooking for us. Um, painting and making art is a great time to get creative. No one's going to judge you. You're just in your own home. Um, my friends in Australia and I, we have a Facebook group where we share a new watercolor piece each week, and that keeps us motivated to keep making art. And if you can, taking lots of walks or bike rides or rollerblading or skateboarding around your neighborhood. Um, it's just helpful to get out of the house and you'll never know who you might see or what you might think of um, when you're just getting your body and mind moving. And singing and playing piano and the guitar has been really um, a fun outlet for me, at least during this time. I don't know if any of you are mus musicians here. 
And here are some more ideas to bring these big talk ideas back to your home, community, school, or your workplace. Um, during quarantine, you can engage in these big talk questions and exercises with your team members or your friend groups. Um, you could highlight an individual or group of individuals in a newsletter, email, blog post, Instagram video, YouTube, where the person answers big talk questions. And that way you get to know your peers better. This is actually a great time to kind of capture people's attention and self-reflect. And then um, another idea, creating big talk journals or materials for personal reflection exercises. Often at the end of the day, I usually write down a question at the top of my journal and answer it. And then after quarantine's over and you're able to be with people again, you could post a big talk question each week in a public space and ask people to write their responses on a board as they walk by. Or you could host an icebreaker or orientation activity for new employees, families, or community members. Um, it helps you make sure people can make deep connections right away during the first few weeks of belonging to a new group, which can often be very scary. Um, you could host a big talk ice cream social barbecue or potluck party and place um, question cards on tables for people to pick up and answer. And usually just having a question there written in front of you helps people feel less scared or awkward about answering something because it's not, it doesn't put the pressure on them, but it puts it on the question. Um, and then bring the Big Talk team, which is me, to your school or work to help build the Big Talk movement into everyday communication. Um, I can't wait to travel again and start meeting you all in person and doing Big Talk activities again. And finally, here's some information. Um, you can learn more about Big Talk at makebigtalk.com. Um, and then everything is just YouTube, the Facebook group, Instagram, everything just at Make Big Talk. And then my personal information is all here. Uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or email or Instagram or Twitter. Um, I'm around just home a lot of the time. <laughs> I'll leave this up for a moment if anyone wants to write it down. And finally, um, let's see. 540 now or maybe 2 a.m. for Port Jordan's in Paris. Um, let's see, here's what the card game they sell online. And yeah, now I'll just leave it open for a closing discussion or Q&A. If anyone has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself um, or write it in the chat room. Um, thank you so much for being here. I know everyone's coming from different countries and different time zones. So yeah, we'd love to hear your thoughts or questions or feel free to email me and yeah, we can keep it going um, or I can stay in the room for another five minutes until we'll see. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ahmed. Thanks, Daniel. And the next speaker will be Jordan Hill. They'll pop in for their presentation. Thanks, Robin. I'll just wait a couple more minutes and then I'll give it to the next presentation. Turn my information back up there for one more minute and then I'll stop the screen share. Cool, well thank you everyone for tuning in and I hope you're all having a great day wherever you are. Um, and Feel free to reach out to me. I would love to meet you and talk privately. And um, yeah, enjoy the next presentation. Bye everyone.